We begin in Alberta, where approvals for renewable energy power plant projects have been paused until next year. The government said they are concerned about the impact of renewable electricity developments on agricultural and environmental land. The pause will affect project approvals for wind, solar, geothermal, biomass and hydroelectric generators. Alberta's Minister of Affordability and Utilities, Nathan Newdorf, joins me now. Minister, very good to have you on the program. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Alberta has had um, something of a renaissance in renewable energy business growth. It's been quite impressive. Uh, and now your government has sort of suddenly, seemingly without much notice, pulled the rug out from underneath that business. For a province that positions itself for being so pro-business, uh, how do these two things equate with one another? Well, we wanted to start immediately on some significant issues that have been raised to us by industry, municipalities and individual landowners, key areas like land usage, access to the grid and related costs to ratepayers, reclamation and land restoration, as well as reliability, stability and affordability. We really needed to address these very quickly. And with the incredible growth, as you said, we, we couldn't get there quickly enough. Uh, just a few years ago, we had only 85 megawatts brought onto our grid for the entire year. Last year, that was 1,000. And right now, we're constructing 3,500, looking at maybe 23,000 or more uh, coming at us in the future. And we needed to make sure our regulations and guidelines were current enough to, to meet this new demand. Why didn't you see it coming? I mean, Alberta, just in terms of sun, gets more sun than most other parts of the of the country, it would seem that when you consider the solar business, that you're one of the provinces where it would work. Exactly, and that's why we wanna make these adjustments. Uh, like I said, only two years ago, the entire amount of uh, renewable brought online was 85 megawatts. Mm -hmm. In a system at the time that was about 12,000 megawatts, that's really a small number, but we see it growing substantially. And you didn't see and it coming? When, you, you didn't see that this would happen? Well, our regulators didn't. Certainly, you can ask the, the renewable energy industry. They they came to me just the other day saying our uh, Alberta electrical systems operator wasn't prepared for this, and okay. they're right. So why do you have to have a complete moratorium? Why do you have to shut this down for seven months and throw business into instability, the one thing that business hates? I think it's exactly the opposite. The business is asking for stability. And if we're going to continually change the rules sort of as we go ad hoc, that's even worse. So what we wanted to do is define a very clear time frame of when we start and when we end so that they have that certainty and invite them to the table to help us get to these solutions. These solutions are out there, but nobody's had this conversation. And again, it's because of the relative speed of the, the, the growth in the industry. Only three years ago, we had 85 megawatts out of 12,000. Now we're at almost 20% of our grid is renewables, which is fantastic. And our entire grid is about 18,000 megawatts. So if you look at 23,000 more wanting to come online, mm -hmm. that means more than doubling our current system without any of the regulations or guidelines that are appropriate to handle that. So we want to have that in place before industry brings their investment to the table so they know very clearly what's expected and, of them. and why not meet a minister with industry stakeholders with the renewable industry before making this announcement we were trying to unfortunately we had a bit of a scheduling glitch and we weren't able to get there but again the sooner we start this the sooner we can complete it and the entire process is meant to have those conversations with key stakeholders to make sure that we get the conversations adjusted to where they are we didn't want to do that piecemeal um, of the 15 projects in line, depending when we made these decisions, one or two are subject to some of these, some are subject to more. We thought it was much more equitable to draw a clear start line and treat all of them the same rather than a, a really staggered and messy uh, application to some of these new decisions. One of the things that, uh, that, that critics of your decision are raising is that there seems to be something of a hypocrisy, something of a, a, an inconsistency that you have on renewables said, hey, we're concerned about land use, and so we're gonna just put it all on hold for seven months. Um, and yet I think about the 10,000 plus orphan wells in your province, the, the, at least that, that in many cases have contaminated the landscape. There's been no moratorium on that. 
those just sit. So how do you explain sort of the inconsistency between, well, now we have renewables and we're concerned about what might happen, so we're just going to shut it down, something we never did with oil? Well, a lot of those problems have been around for 60 or 70 years, and that's exactly what Albertans wished had happened at that time, that someone would have pumped the brakes and make sure that we have rules in place so that didn't happen. That's exactly what we don't want to have happen in this wonderful new uh, arena of renewables. Let's clearly set the the expectations so that investors know what they're expecting and Albertans and landowners know that if for some untoward reason at the end where the money is coming from it's sufficient dollars it's being held by which entity to make sure that we have that cleanup this is exactly why we're trying to raise this so we don't end up 20 30 40 years from now in the same kind of situation we are with orphan wells so explain to me what what exactly is the concern why is this moratorium needed Again, we have so many people coming on board. I, I don't know how many times I, I need to... I, well, I know, to I, I've heard you it. say it, Minister, but I, I don't understand why growth is necessarily bad. It, growth is not bad. It's great if you have the structure to do it. Here's a quote right from the Alberta Utilities Commission. The AUC's case-by-case -case application process for new power plants is ill-suited to address these broad policy changes. Rather, effective resolution necessarily requires a dedicated period of engagement with all the stakeholders identified above, followed by government direction, either in the form of provincial policy or new legislation. Again, the current rules were set 25 years ago when we didn't even have this industry. And the rapid growth means that the sooner we can get that, the more stability we offer to the entire industry, including our grid. And this is going to impact affordability. This is going to impact reliability. Mm -hmm. We need to get these things right for future generations. And the sooner we do that, the better. And you feel the only way to do that is to put everything on hold until you've come up with a solution. Are, are you convinced that seven months will be enough time? It's not, it's not the only way. There's certainly there are other ways. And we could, have, we could have put the target on a number of different industries that weren't prepared for this. But... It is a responsibility of government to make sure that the entire system across the entire province is operating well, that the, the different uh, electrical associations across the province are working together for the most efficiency and the least redundancy. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that landowners are, are uh, satisfied with, with their contracts, which the industry has done a terrific job on a case-by-case -case basis, but we're looking at the entire industry. So we've had a, a very uh, heated debate within cabinet about the best way to approach. And we felt that uh, approaching this quickly, head on, taking responsibility for an issue that has been here for 10 years where different municipalities have been asking for consideration. We've decided to take the issues, uh, uh, address them head on and work with industry to find answers. Answers are available. We just have to take the time to sit down and work through them. All right, Minister, thank you very much for your time. Energy, obviously, a very important topic right across this country, and we appreciate hearing from you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time today. Alberta is putting a seven-month pause on approvals for new renewable energy power plants while it launches an inquiry. The pause will affect project approvals for wind, solar, geothermal, biomass and hydroelectric generators. Now, industry members from inside that renewable industry are calling this decision a mistake. So let's turn to the president of the Canadian Renewable Energy Association, Vittoria Bellissimo. Welcome to the show, Vittoria. Thank you for having me. Well, you heard uh, my interview with the minister um, just before the break. Um, your thoughts uh, about his, his explanation of this decision? Yeah, I mean, we did have a chance to speak with the minister early this week, not early enough to uh, change the decision. I would say that from an industry perspective, we are disappointed and uh, we believe that it is a mistake. Uh, all of the problems that need to be addressed are things that we're already working on um, and there isn't good education about what is happening and that is a problem and we will work on that but there's no need to do a moratorium across the entire sector for this um, and it's going to possibly scare away investment for what has otherwise been a really big success story in the province of Alberta. Okay so a lot to unpack there certainly the moratorium but I want to talk about um, the problems that are identified you say that there are problems that are being worked on what do you see as the problems? 
Um, well, I mean, I, I think that Alberta has suffered from uh, the orphan well uh, situation. And so there is a fear, and I'm Albertan as well, so I, I am interested in making sure we have solutions to all of these problems. Um, but there is a fear that any industry will come in and leave assets in the landscape that are not useful anymore, and they will be left to landowners um, and the government to deal with. And I have been trying to emphasize, and our industry has been trying to emphasize, that this is a, an entirely different sector. Um, it is renewable, and it's called renewable for a reason. The wind will continue to blow, and the sun will continue to shine. With orphan wells, you end up with production decreases, but with renewables, you don't. Uh, the wind will still be there, so you can replace generation assets, and you can still use the site uh, ongoing beyond the life of the generation assets. Okay, so that's one of the challenges, but uh, they are hearing uh, from some rural constituencies about concerns they're having around land use. Do you believe that's connected to that, that idea of what happens if somebody doesn't want to use a windmill anymore? No, I, I believe the land use concerns are, are very real and we're working on it as an industry. Um, it's different for wind and solar. For, for wind, uh, one of the benefits is that you can uh, grow crops or uh, have a wild, you, or have uh, grazing up to the foundation of the wind turbines, which allows multiple uh, land uses in that, in that area. With solar, we are working on things like agrivoltaics, so you can grow crops and have solar at the same time. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're certainly working on it. It's a real concern, and uh, I and I think that we will continue to to progress, but it doesn't warrant a more moratorium on the entire industry. Alberta has actually uh, been one of the North American leaders in terms of renewable energy, in terms of the number of businesses that uh, have been planting up in, in recent years. What effect do you think this will have? I'm concerned about it. So just for context, in 2022, 75% of the renewable growth uh, capacity-wise in the entire country was in Alberta. So it's been a real success story. Uh, my concern is that these companies have labor and equipment and capital and they will allocate it elsewhere. So if they see that we don't have policy stability in Alberta, they will go elsewhere and they will take all of their assets and all of their capabilities with them. And that will mean that Alberta will lose the advantage that we've had. Okay, you've now met with the minister. You didn't have that chance, he said, because of scheduling reasons before the decision was made. But now that it has been made, are you attempting to have it undone? Or what are you calling on the Alberta government and Alberta Utilities Commission to do? Yes, we are. Uh, we are setting up regular meetings with the minister and with his government. We're setting. We're looking to set up regular meetings with the Alberta Utilities Commission, with the Alberta Electric System Operator, um, and we will work through the AUC inquiry that has been set up. But I, I think that this is enough of a mistake that we need to backtrack right away. So um, we could talk about various modules for the AUC inquiry and how you can off off ramp problems that are already solved. Um, but I, six months is what was promised. It's actually eight, um, if you look to when the AUC report will actually be set in. And, and I think that's a non-starter for this industry. It'll, we'll see investment flow elsewhere. Do you think there's anything else that's at play here? Uh, no, that's a that's an interesting question and probably a better question for the minister to answer. I think there are real landowner concerns, and I think that we have a lot of work to do to alleviate some of those. And but we are working on it, and it isn't necessarily something that uh, warrants a moratorium. And if I could just elaborate on that a little bit mm -hmm. further, um, it, it is it is interesting uh, renewables. Uh, which are different from oil and gas here. Renewables are, are subject to surface rights and the landowners really do hold the reins. So if a landowner is interested in remedial, remediation clauses in their land leases, they can negotiate that. If a landowner is interested in ensuring there are bonds set aside, then that is an option. Uh, all of the renewables and energy storage projects built in Alberta uh, are on uh, private land, mm -hmm. not crown land. Crown land is something that we're looking at and we'd like to have open up. Um, but right now it's it's just private land and landowners really uh, are able to uh, make the deals they want to, to make. 
And in addition to that, I would argue that it is in fact not the wild, wild west at all. It's the well-regulated west. Uh, there are rules in place, including uh, Alberta's Alberta Environment and Protected Areas Wildlife Directives, uh, Conservation and Reclamation Directives, which have been in place since 2017, 2018, which is not that long ago. And in addition to that, we have been building wind in Alberta since the early 1990s. So there's 30 years of history here. Uh, to, to suddenly decide that we can't handle it and we need to stop is a real problem. And if the regulator needs to play catch up and the, and the ISO needs to play catch up, they can do that without telling the industry that we won't have any approvals for a very long period of time. All right, Victoria, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your interest.